So here we are with week 10 of the 2023 NFL season, and this marks the beginning of the second half of this current NFL season. So we're already done with the first half. Now here we are with the second half with weeks 10 to 18. And with the second half of the season, as always, it comes with increased pressure, increased expectations for each and every team. Yes, even if you're a losing team, that's probably not going to make the playoffs, but you still have questions to answer as you head into your offseason. Yes, that's pretty much like over two months away still. But nonetheless, there's still questions to be answered for every single NFL team out there. So that all begins with week 10 of this 2023 NFL season. So we already kicked things off with Thursday Night Football only on Amazon Prime Video, which if you did have $15.99 a month for this game, well, you were a very lucky man or woman or whatever. You were very lucky not to watch this week's Thursday night game. And, well, you're probably going to be lucky if you don't get to watch uh, any of these primetime games this week. But more on that in a bit. For this game in particular, uh, Deontay Foreman, the running back, scored a third-quarter goal line touchdown as the Chicago Bears didn't really have to do all that much. Um, it gets a very terrible Carolina Panthers offense. That in included Bryce Young, the quarterback, as the Bears beat the Panthers 16-13 to in a very awful, probably one of the worst games of the season uh, by far on Thursday night. So now let's get into the actual games that we're going to cover and that is to come. Starting with Sunday uh, on the Sunday morning side, in the early morning portion, if you really want to wake up at early ass o'clock to see this game, by all means, do that. So we wrap up the international slate of games for this NFL season as the Indianapolis Colts at 4-5 and five take on the New England Patriots at 2-7. and seven. When you thought that you were going to have a good fall from the Dolphins and Chiefs game in Germany last week. Oh boy, all you German folks out there are going to get a good fall up with this game. So for for the Colts, they beat the Panthers uh, last week. Meanwhile, the Patriots lost a close nail-biter to the Commanders. But oh boy, uh, if you're a Patriots fan, you're probably either rejoicing or probably getting disappointed because, well, head coach Bill Belichick could be shown the door as soon as after this game especially if he loses this game to the Indianapolis Colts. So apparently there's reports out there saying that Bill Belichick could be shown the door if he loses this game to the Colts. Meanwhile, for the Colts, you know, for as okay as that defense performance was against the Carolina Panthers, I mean, granted, it's the Panthers, that offense really didn't do all that much. They didn't need to do that much, but I imagine they have to do a little bit more against the, pa the Patriots. And, you know, for all good funny duddy stuff, I'll go with the Colts just to see, you know, Bill Belichick get shown the door. I mean, it's time, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for Bill Belichick to get shown the door. Uh, the Cleveland Browns at 5-3 and three take on the 7-2 Baltimore Ravens in a kind of big uh, AFC North showdown. It's a rematch from week number four where the Ravens beat the Browns in Cleveland 28-3, back all the way in week four. So in terms of last week, the Browns shut out the Arizona Cardinals 27-0. They're trotting out clean tune the rookie fifth rounder to the wolves meanwhile for the ravens they blew out the seattle seahawks 37 to 3 so for the browns uh you know they still have their defense um their their top tier defense to to compete in this game against baltimore and try to get a split uh the only thing is you no know, you know their offense what are they gonna how's their offense gonna perform in this game meanwhile for the ravens their own offense it seems like it's finally humming at all facets especially in the running game. But now they have an opportunity to distance itself in the division race. They can get a, a season sweep of the Cleveland Browns if they win this game. So I think even with a ferocious defense in the Browns, I think what the Ravens can do is beat them again. So I'm going with the Ravens. The Houston Texans at 4-4 four four, take on the Cincinnati Bengals at 5-3. and three. Uh, The Texans beat the Bucks in that exciting game last week. Meanwhile, for the Bengals, they beat the Bills last Sunday night. Uh, CJ Stroud, you know, he faces another test here against the, against the contending Bengals team on the road, but it should be it should be an exciting one. Uh, for Joe Burrow in the Cincy offense, you know, they're still trying to uh, regain some ground in the division race. They're technically fourth place, but you also have the Steelers up, up in front of them, but I'm going to go with the Bengals in this one. Uh, the San Francisco 49ers at 5-3 take on the Jacksonville Jaguars at 6-2. Both teams were on a bye week last week, uh, but last time both teams were in action. Y'all know what happened to my Niners. 
uh, to the Bengals back in week eight. And then the Jaguars, they beat the Steelers back in week eight. So I'll once again be talking about uh, my team more in depth, like the first time in a while that I did that. But I'll have my own dedicated preview for that. But in terms of this game, um, they, they really need to snap this three-game uh, losing skid because this is actually kind of a critical game to do this because if they don't, it's really time to sound the alarm, ladies and gentlemen. It is really time to sound the alarm. Meanwhile, for the Jaguars, they're looking for their sixth straight win. They're looking to really take command of this AFC South because, you know, you can't really... Um, I mean, I'm not going to say the Texans are going to try to snatch it away from them, but you really want to take each and every game seriously if you want to be one of the top contenders, sleeping contenders in the AFC. So I'm going to go with the Niners here just to play it safe. We'll see. Uh, the New Orleans Saints at 5-4 and four, take on the also min- uh, Minnesota Vikings, also at 5-4. and four. Uh, The Saints, they beat the Bears last week, um, and the Vikings beat the Falcons in a comeback win. Uh, in that comeback win, you know, their original quarterback, Jaron Hall, he got concussed in that game. So Josh Dobbs, the quarterback, uh, the Vikings traded from the Arizona Cardinals, they had to, he had to step in, and despite some, a shaky start, he managed to lead a comeback win over the Falcons. And who knows? Maybe it sounds a little crazy, but maybe he could be the thing that saved Minnesota season. Probably not a playoff appearance. Uh, or a deep, if they do make the playoffs, maybe not a deep one. But it could be the thing that lifts their spirits. They're sure they're not thinking of morals victories, but kind of lifts their spirits, I guess. Meanwhile, for the New Orleans Saints... Um, a lot, uh, key reason for why they won against the, a very mediocre Bears team, or a very bad one at least, is that, well, they went back to their kind of their roots uh, from a couple years ago. Taysom Hill, being that Swiss Army knife, being that multifaceted player. You know, he had a touchdown and a receiving a touchdown, a passing and receiving touchdown. He's pretty much being back to the key to the success for that Saints offense. So expect them, I hope they expect them to utilize that more here against the Vikings. But I think the Vikings will do a little bit more to edge out the Saints. Uh, the Green Bay Packers at 3-5 and five take on the 5-3 and three Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, the Packers beat the Rams, who were without Matthew Stafford last week. Uh, the Steelers beat the Titans in a close one on Thursday night. Um, you know, the Packers, I mean, they're, they're trying, but until they can get Jordan Love to play a clean game, I mean, I don't really expect much out of them, especially considering they're playing a tough Steelers defense. Meanwhile, for the Steelers offense, they're doing so-so, but then there there are times where they really need to get out of that case of inconsistency. So it could be an ugly one, but I'm going to go with the Steelers. Uh, the Tennessee Titans at 3-5 and five take on the also 3-5 and five Tampa Bay Bucks. Uh, the Titans lost to the Steelers, um, and the Bucks also lost to the Texans in that, that nail-biting game. Um, so Will Levis... Um, despite losing that game to the Steelers, he had himself a, a good performance, a good showing for the second straight week. So that was enough for the Titans to say, and you know what? Let's name him the permanent starting quarterback for the rest of the season. So Ryan Tannehill is the backup. I mean, he seems fully healthy from his ankle injury, but unfortunately, the, the keys have been handed to the rookie, Will Levis. I mean, he's earned it. He's absolutely earned it. So... Let's see how he does against this Tampa Bay team. And it should be interesting how he goes from there. Meanwhile, for this Bucks passing defense, it's falling apart. It is really falling apart. And, I mean, it, sure, you, you, some people will blame Baker Mayfield, but it's like, what more can he do? I mean, he tried to will um, his, his team against the Texans, but it's like, if his defense is not doing well, then what, what, where else can you blame the, the Bucks for losing these close games? And for the Bucks defense, it's not going to get any better against a kind of sur- surging rookie in Will Levis. So I'm going to go with the Titans. Going to the afternoon slate of games, you have the 4-5 and five Atlanta Falcons taking on the 1-8 and eight Arizona Cardinals. So both of these teams lost last week, uh, as I mentioned before. So for Arthur Smith, I don't know why he's so stubborn, man. He doesn't want to use his two... His two of his best players on, on the team. I mean, tight end Kyle Pitts and then the rookie running back B. John Robinson. It's like, I don't understand. It's 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 baffling. It's very baffling to me. And it's part of the reason, if not the ma- one of the major reasons why the Falcons keep losing these uh, close games. 
and they're in the season. So it's costing the team. It's really costing the team. And I wouldn't be surprised if it cost them this one against an Arizona Cardinals team that's getting their starting quarterback back in Kyler Murray. So Kyler Murray is cleared to go. He's finally expected to make his return to the starting lineup from his ACL uh, tear late last year. Um, I expect him to be a little rusty, but we will see how he does. So I'm going to go with the Falcons here just to play it safe. But don't expect them, uh, don't be surprised if they blow this game against Arizona. Then if you have the Detroit Lions at 6-2, and two, returning from their bye week, uh, taking on the LA Chargers at 4-4. Four and four. Um, The Lions, last time we saw them in action, blew the brakes off the Raiders at home back in Week 8. And then the Chargers on Monday night, they beat the Jets 27-6, mainly on the backs of their defense. Um, they seem to have picked it up, um, and per se. I mean, it's not really saying much because they're playing a Jets offense that was re- that's really spiring out of control now. But now they need Justin Herbert in the offense to pretty much do the same so they can like have a balanced, uh, balanced attack. Meanwhile, for the Detroit Lions, they're coming off their bye week. And let's see what they can do now that... Um, now that they kind of see that Minnesota, okay, they're kind of doing something now, but let's see if Detroit can really make a push for, for the NFC North division title and perhaps even more than that, maybe even more than that. So I'm going to go with the Lions here. Uh, the New York Giants at two and seven, take on the Dallas Cowboys at five and three, uh, America's game of the week on Fox. Yeah, this is your America's game of the week. This is where you sent Kevin Burkhart and and Greg Olson this week to call this game. Of all games, you send them to. Oh, because it's the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants. Like, oh, fuck that shit. Yeah. This is your prime time game in the afternoon. Good job. Good job. The NFL really hates its fans. It, 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 good job there. So, anyway, both of these teams lost. Um, the Giants lost to the Raiders. Um, I'll get into the reason for why um, in a bit. And the Cowboys lost to the Eagles in a game where they could have won that. They, they really could have won that. So, th- for the Cowboys, they have no more room to error. They will win this game. No, n- guaranteed. But they have no more room for error if they want to catch the Philadelphia Eagles. If they can catch the Philadelphia Eagles. Meanwhile, for the Giants, I mean, <laughs> the, they lost that game against the Raiders because, well, they lost Daniel Jones for the season with an ACL tear. And they have no quarterbacks left. Um, and that ACL tear is pretty much the final the final white la- white flag wave on the Giants season, ladies and gentlemen. So there's not more to say on this game. Um, what should have been the the late afternoon primetime game uh, per se is the Washington Commanders at four and four taking on the Seattle Seahawks at five and three. I get it. There's only three games in this window, but it should have been this game, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, because the Giants are that bad. Uh, the Commanders, you know, they beat the Patriots and the Seahawks. They got their butts whooped, but you know, for at least for Washington, um, you know, there's not really a lot of too much talent left on this team, but they still they still at least show some fight. They still at least some show some fight, especially with their quarterback Sam Howell, who still doesn't have an offensive line, but they can still be a scrappy team that can still pull off a few more upsets, and they could cut it close against Seattle, who. In last week, blew a major chance to up their lead in the NFC West and are trying to bounce back here. So it'll be a close one, but I think Seattle will will come away with this win. Then we have the Sunday night football game, and I, I don't understand this. I don't understand why the NFL didn't want to flex this out. Is it because it's the Raiders? Is it because it's the Jets? Were there no there, were there no better options? Did CBS and Fox really want to protect their games that badly? Like, my God. <laughs> The, the primetime games, like, for a good amount this season, like, the middle portion of this season have been so bad. It's been so bad. And this is no different. The New York Jets at 4-4, four and four, taking on the Las Vegas Raiders at 4-5. and five. Do we need to say more about this? Do we need to, I mean, I guess we're lucky that we don't get to see Jimmy Garbage fail for the fourth primetime game of the season. Like, my God. But we have to see Zach Wilson. We have to see Zach Wilson. I mean, I get it. He's bad. But his supporting cast is not helping him either. He deserves, they, they deserve plenty of blame too. Especially what you've seen a couple days prior. They're not helping him out. 
And I, like his offensive line, his starting offensive line is all on injured reserve. But the makeshift one, help him out. Help Zach Wilson out. And again, Zach Wilson sucks. But his supporting cast has to help him. It, like Aaron Rodgers, if he was in there, oh, he would have been shit on too. Meanwhile, for the Raiders, I mean, I don't really know what to say, but at least going into this game, Aaron, Antonio Pierce, the interim head coach, he's looking to get that second straight win, and he's probably going to get it here. So, what with the Raiders? And then another primetime atrocity for this week the Denver Broncos. Yes, the 3 and 5 Denver Broncos taking on the 5 and 4 Buffalo Bills. But I mean, hey, you never know. At least with the Broncos, they come in with, come in with some momentum. They upset the Chiefs back in week eight. They're coming off their bye week, coming in fresh. Meanwhile, for the Bills, they're coming in with ice cold momentum. They lost uh, to the Bengals 24 to 18 on Sunday night of uh, last week in week nine. And things are not really looking good for them. They're having a lot of inconsistent play on offense, uh, coupled with all those injuries on defense. And what do you get together? A very concerning team right now. Uh, at the midway point of the season. Meanwhile, for Denver, they're looking to string together another upset win coming out of that bye week. So, can they do that? Hey, anything's possible, I guess. So, like Denver, why not? Why the hell not? Like, there are other worse options out there. So, those are my picks. Those are my, That's my preview for week number 10 of this 2023 NFL season. Yeah, a lot of bad primetime games, ladies and gentlemen. The entire primetime slate is that bad. So, let me know your picks. Let me know uh, who you're going with, who you're going against. Um, if your team's playing this week, uh, let me know your thoughts on them and, your, and their opponent in the comments below. But anyway, this is Dylan Lasagna signing out of another NFL preview and picks video. And until next time, keep that lasagna very cold in the fridge with your takes on the world of sports. And until next time, peace out.